Today we're going to be talking about skin softening and why we need to use skin softening on our images. So I'm going to show you how we use a skin softening filter to go from something like this to something a little more flattering like this. I'm in the business of photographing skin. A lot of my clients are in various states of undress. There's a lot of skin on show. Cameras these days are ridiculously high definition. 50 million pixels is not uncommon. Uh, that can be really unkind on skin and doesn't make our clients feel very happy if they see their skin under so much uh, high resolution. So we need a way of just bringing it back down to earth uh, in, a, in a nice sensible way. I'm uh, running a busy studio so I don't necessarily have the time to spend hours just editing one image. So we need to find a way of editing images quickly, applying that skin softening in a fast, efficient, but as I say, quality way. I use uh, an action in Photoshop, uh, which I've tweaked over the years. And it does a really good job of um, providing that skin softening to the images. I'm not saying it's the best way. I'm not saying it's the only way. What I'm saying is it's my way and uh, I've been using it for a number of years and I'm going to now show you how we how we use it on our images So uh, here we are I've got our picture of our model on the screen uh, I've already done a little bit of editing on there to remove some skin blemishes some spots and bits and pieces uh, And all ready to apply some skin softening um, She's done a really good job with her makeup, but uh, even so um, 24 million pixels. Uh, it's it's really hard on the skin. Um, so let's give it that skin softening effect and uh, give her uh, beautiful soft skin. Uh, just a word uh, before we start. If you're using a mouse to do skin softening editing in Photoshop, it's really really hard. So if you can get yourself a data tablet, it's really worthwhile um, because <laughs> you get much better quality control as long as you haven't got a dog who keeps pushing his nose in and uh, stopping you from working when you're trying to create a video for a website. <laughs> okay, so you can see our action over here, our soft focus filter, does lots and lots and lots of things. I'm not going to go through all of that today because that will take us ages. Uh, we're just going to show you how we run the action, how we apply the skin softening selectively to the skin areas that we want to apply it to um, and, uh, and then finish it off. Okay, uh, so without further ado, let's click play. Okay, click play and literally within a second or two, uh, the action has completed. And if we move over to our layers palette, we will see we have a new layer and that is our skin softening filter layer. You can see we have a layer mask on there as well. Uh, and the layer mask is black, which means that the layer is currently hidden. Black hides the layer on the layer mask. Uh, white on the layer mask reveals the layer. Don't be afraid of layers. Layers are really not that complicated, um, but they are amazing. Um, they allow us to do so much in Photoshop. So my advice, if you're scared of layers, you've been put off by playing with layers, don't be, okay? Give layers a go. They are um, a way of life. <laughs> okay, so as I say, we have black on our layer mask, which is hiding our skin softening layer. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna paint white onto that black and that's gonna reveal our skin softening layer through the layer mask, allowing us to selectively apply the skin softening to the skin. Okay, so let's, uh, let's crack on. Okay, so we're selecting our brush. Settings for our brush, my preferred settings, they might not be your preferred settings, but these work particularly well for me. I would urge you to give them a go, okay? Set your opacity to 100%. Set your flow to 3%. Okay, flow at 3% means that you are going to be able to keep painting white onto that black and every time you're painting your brush stroke over an area, you're adding a little bit more white and you're gradually building the white up to reveal the skin softening layer underneath and build it up to a level that you're comfortable with. Okay, so a low number on the flow will allow you to do that nice and gradually and have a lot of control as you're painting it onto the skin. Okay. The other thing to remember, um, because we're using the flow control there, we want to just check uh, our brushes uh, tools over here and make sure that we have a number set in our spacing area. Okay, 
10% um, is quite good. If you have that down to 1%, you will lose the flow control. Okay, so round about 10% is a good number to have on the spacing. It seems to work quite well for me. Uh, again, might not be your preferred number. Um, have a play, um, trial it and see how you get on. Okay, uh, don't worry too much about the smoothing. Um, it's set at 10%, but it doesn't have too much effect um, in this particular instance today. Okay, so we've set our foreground color to white. We've got our brushes set, so let's just zoom in on the face. Control and space bar moves us nice and close. And then I'm gonna just start painting onto the skin. And if you keep an eye on the layer mask up there on the right hand side, you'll start to see some white appearing on the, on the black box. And that's the area that I've painted. And you will gradually start to see the skin softening layer appear underneath. One of the things I should have mentioned is that we actually have a really soft edged brush, okay? If we go over to our brushes over here, just to show you, we have the hardness set at 0%, okay? Which is what we want, um, so that we don't have to worry too much about going the over the edges, um, because it's just gonna feather off nicely at the sides um, and uh, not give us too much problems if we get too close to our edges. And you want it to just blend in nicely, okay? And being careful not to paint over things like eye brush, eye brush, eyebrows and eyelashes, okay? Because we want those to be nice and crisp and sharp. We're not putting the skin softening onto the teeth or the lips because we want those to be nice and sharp. And we're not putting it onto clothes uh, or other uh, things that, that should retain their sharpness. Uh, and by doing that, we retain a, an illusion of sharpness over the whole over the whole image. If you want to see how you're getting along and how much you've painted on, if you're not used to looking at it and seeing how much skin softening is being applied, uh, you can just hit your backslash key on your keyboard and you can see the uh, red layer mask on there and the area that isn't red is the bits that you've already painted. So you can get an idea about where you're going with it and you can see quite nicely there that the eyebrows and the eyelashes and the lips and teeth haven't been done. We might just put a little bit more on the cheeks and the nose and what have you here, okay? Backslash again to turn that off. Okay, and we just keep painting on until we're happy. Okay. Another thing that you can do if you wanna see how you're getting on, how much you actually painted, uh, if you go to your Option key or your Alt key, and then you click on the layer mask, you'll actually bring up the area that you've painted over the image as an overlay, and you can see quite clearly uh, the very strange outline of our model's face where you've painted. Okay, so uh, Alt click again, and that turns that off. Just gonna zoom out a little bit, because I'm quite happy with the face there. That's looking pretty good. So I'm just moving down to the neck and down to the skin. across the breasts over here, on the neck and the shoulders. Let's move that slightly. Okay, a little bit just onto the leg. Don't have to worry too much down here because obviously we're, we've got quite a shallow depth of field on this picture and so the legs and the hand is drifting out of focus anyway. So and we don't need too much of the softening down there, but just a little bit on the breast and why it just works really nicely. Okay, so kind of quite liking that. So I'm just gonna zoom in again, control space bar, zoom in on the face, space bar just to move the image around, get it in the middle. Okay, so I'm just gonna go over to the layers palette again and I'm gonna turn the eye symbol off, uh, just to turn the uh, skin softening layer off so I can see the before and the after effect. Okay, so off, on, off, on, off, on. That's looking really nice. Okay, so I'm just gonna just add a tiny couple of little bits and pieces around here. Incidentally, if you're not aware of how to change your brush size quickly when you're painting or drawing onto, on Photoshop, just use your square bracket keys. So the left square bracket key will make your cursor smaller and the right one will make it larger and I generally have my finger permanently placed on those keys as I'm doing this, so that I can just change the brush size up or down as I go around. 
Okay, so I'm happy with that. Off, on, yeah, perfect. So the great thing about this is that if you have overdone it or you feel you've overdone it, then you've still got control um, over it and you can turn it up or down at will. Because it's on a separate layer, uh, we've got an opacity control for that layer. And at the moment we have that opacity control set to 80%. Uh, if we take it down to zero, we're effectively turning it off. Uh, we can bring it right up to 100% and that's really well. <laughs> a little bit too much, I think. Uh, even our model might complain about that, uh, uh, that amount of skin softening. Turn it off so you can really see the, uh, the effect there. Uh, it's a bit too heavy. So let's drop it down to 80%, which is my target area. Also, if you have made a real mistake, uh, let's pretend that we've actually softened all of the lips just here, which uh, we really don't want to do, okay? Because uh, we painted white onto her lips. Uh, we can reverse that just by changing our foreground color to black, and then we're gonna paint black back on, which is gonna reverse the effect of painting white on. There we go, and just do that. And that is back to where it was before. So if you make a mistake, it's really easy to correct, which is uh, another, another good thing about uh, using layers and layer masks. Really easy to correct your mistakes uh, as you go along. Okay. Perfect, okay, so we're just gonna zoom out there. That's looking really nice. Overall effect is uh, really quite subtle, um, but uh, looks, uh, looks amazing. Okay, so what do we do next uh, once we've uh, kind of done our skin softening? Uh, we need to flatten those layers together. So we need to combine that skin softening layer with our background layer so they become one. Okay, very easy. Uh, we go to layer, flatten image, not rocket science. Okay, that's looking really good. Okay, before I save my image, um, uh, if it was finished, there's a couple of bits of other bits and pieces I would probably do to it, but I'm just gonna save it for now to finish this off. Um, but I would apply a, um, um, some sharpening to the image. Okay, and we're gonna, just use a really quick and dirty unsharp mask just to do that for now. Again, there are lots of different methods of uh, uh, applying an unsharp mask and ideally we won't, don't want to apply that onto everything um, or we want to apply it to uh, less on the skin and more on the eyes and more on the lips and so on and so forth. For now, I'm just going to apply it to the whole image just so you get the idea. Uh, numbers there, dialed in around about 80%. Uh, on uh, on the amount 1.7 on the radius yeah um, that looks pretty good uh, these numbers depend on the size and resolution of the image that you're working at my image is currently 12 inches by 8 inches at 300 uh, 300 pixels uh, per inch uh, click OK and uh, you can see now that our model skin is looking pretty flawless uh, really nice Okay, so, uh, oops, I would uh, go ahead and save that uh, to your desired location, job done. Like I say, it's my preferred method of doing the skin softening in a time economical way whilst delivering good quality results. There are other methods such as the frequency separation, which takes a little bit longer. Uh, I'll be doing another video about that at some point, um, but this way we can get a lot of images done in quite a short space of time but in a really nice, effective way. If you want to give it a go, go to the members section of the website. You can download the action, instructions there, how to install the action. Um, and uh, yeah, give it a go. If you get stuck, come back and have another look at the video. All right, cheers.